He married wow. the boss's Mary, daughter. Uh, I married the boss's daughter. <laughs> what? <laughs> Booty ball. Yeah, it was, like a, a was it a strip club? <laughs> you used to take Aros like a shot, just, yeah. just <laughs> without, without water. <laughs> Do you think I should employ him? They said yes! With the magic of editing, we'll go back. <laughs> Good thing you didn't do Prince Andrew's lunch. You a chef, you don't know who just boned his wings. <laughs> Olives, lovely to pair with how Seco with. What is it? Is that a. Chili. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, just make a pasta, make an arrabbiata. <laughs> You're six years old. Ach man, make an arrabbiata. <laughs> Fuck, I don't even know. I, I can't even spell it. yet. Do you have a guilty pleasure? Hello, men. So welcome to another episode of Your Mom Was Skulk. This is definitely the nicest episode we've had. Look, I've got a, a fireside. It's, this is a fireside chat. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, what goes better with a fire than the house seco we've got a chef here i'm gonna ask his his opinion of what it feels like to have wine in a can what your professional culinary opinion is of wine in a can and also i mean what goes better ladies and gentlemen with a house seco than olives olives lovely to pair with house seco with what is in, is that a chili <laughs> Chili and olive. <laughs> Fuck, what will they think of next? Mm. Where the, how does that even grow? Um, <laughs> okay, so I don't want to introduce the, 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 the chef today. I want, I don't know why I haven't done this earlier, but obviously no one can introduce a person better than their mother because your mother is your biggest hype man always. I mean, my mother, if she had to introduce me, I'm currently, as we said, I'm opening for Trevor Noah uh, for his shows at Congrats. Grand West. Thank well you. Done. But if my mom had to now introduce me, you would swear Trevor Noah's opening for, for me. Because that's just <laughs> how my mom. So please introduce your son, ma'am. Okay, well, firstly, my name is Bettina Swart. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested. Swat. 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 Say it's Afrikaans. Swat. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just Afrikaans name, but can't really speak Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because I didn't hear the R in I your surname at all. Swart. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can say Swart, but I say Swart. Uh, she, don't make me speak Afrikaans. Swart analysis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is Chef Ali. Yeah. Oliver Swart. Yes. Oliver Swart. That was and a great intro. Thanks, Mom. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Oli, if you had to say to the people who is he, where they can see him. Chef Oli doesn't have a restaurant or anything like that. Yeah. But he does incredible catering events. And it's literally fine dining on a mass scale. Not fine dining. Not fine dining. But, like but fine. Well, well, I mean, these olives were fine, fine. as hell. I know. <laughs> but just fine. Just fine. He's very calm. You can just imagine Oliver in an event feeding thousand people, and he is trying sorting it all out. I don't know how. He what events it. are you doing that there's a thousand people? <laughs> what kind of catering? Well, we've got a we've got a, the Woolworths charity event coming up. Okay, uh, that's for eight hundred people. Um, we do like big weddings, big yeah. corporate party, big private parties. Yeah. I don't know. We've done Nando's International. Sure. It's, uh, and it's with uh, Annalise, who's my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. um, and she actually, she lives like next door, yeah. He so married wow. the boss's Mar daughter. Uh, I married the boss's daughter. Wow, so you can, you g can get into business with your mother-in-law. Some people can't even <laughs> I started working have with dinner with their mother-in-law, but you are <laughs> cooking dinner with your mother-in-law. <laughs> no, she's amazing. She's so special. Annalise, Annalise Buchanan, yeah. She started the catering company, Annalise Catering, like 35, 30, over 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay. And basically when I moved to Cape Town, uh, well, we both moved from Derbs. Yes. 13 and years ago. 13 yeah. years ago. And then I was needed. It. My parents were very hectic. They were like, you need to get out the house. You're irritating us. Yeah. So Are I you was, an only child? No, no. Yeah. It's a, the two of us. My mom and my sister as well. Who has the business with my mom. The clothing business. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a big family. All like, all everyone, all the, the moms family. are working with the... Yeah, my my daughter works with me in the clothing business, and then it's Oliver, me and, me and B, and then Ollie, um, Oliver is doing his cooking, and yes. he works with his mother-in-law, so it's very interesting. 
So, Girl um, bosses, the woman bosses. Woman bosses. Yes. Yo, well, lo- love part. it. So where did the cooking start? But I want I want you to answer. Where did the cooking start for for Ollie? Did, 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 are you a lover of cooking? And he sort of, because that's a lot where a lot of boys, because uh, not a lot of boys get into cooking. You know. Um, I think when I was growing up, I never knew any, and, and especially in Afrikaans communities, boys learned from their dad to braai. No, so your like the cooking you did was outside by the braai, <laughs> and like I don't know, we, I I guess when I was growing up, the kitchen just wasn't really a place where boys spend time. Well, but I think we all fight over the stove in our family because mm. we all love cooking. Yeah. Um, my su- husband loves cooking. I love cooking. My dad so makes incredible Durban curries. Curries. I love making Thai food, soups, and whatever. But They're the thing good. was, <clears throat> is that when I was younger, I was obsessed that I didn't want any preservatives yes. in the house. Yes, you were okay because that's only now, like now happening with parents. Yeah, but I was doing it then. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. There yeah. was nothing. You were there progressive. Was, there was nothing in nothing the house. In the I had to cook anything. Like if you so wanted to eat, you cook. So he used, I remember I was working and they So you didn't have oros? No, nothing. There was, nothing. There, was, there, was nothing in, there was nothing ready made in the fridge ever. Yo, you poor child. I know. Hey? Like I want a Vienna sausage. No. No, no. preservative. Surely there was a Vienna there. <laughs> Bologna, no. no. I remember coming home and just roasting potatoes and then putting stuff inside. And I'd say, just make a pasta, make an arrabbiata or something, you know? <laughs> You're six years old. Ach man, make an arrabbiata. <laughs> Fuck, I don't even know. I, I can't even spell a, yet. They gave me a frying pan for my sixth birthday. Yeah. That was uh, obsessed. I really? Was no. I was obsessed. Okay, with so food. you did enjoy it. No, I did. No, it no, was, uh, can no I, there, was a, there was a reason why I gave him that. Yes. It's because he was so pedantic about getting up and going to school that like he'd get up at Hopper's four and want to make breakfast and I want to sleep. So I oh, was... Oh, so you started making your own breakfast before school. He made his own school. breakfast. Omelette. So what would you make? Uh, omelette. <laughs> No, man. <laughs> Grade one. <A> fried egg. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, that's insane. I only learned to fry an egg, I'm not going to lie, in my 20s. I mm. uh, could, never, could never cook. But, but in my defense, not saying it's my mom's fault because it's not her fault for loving me too much. But I am an only child and I am very spoiled. And it's just like I literally in my house, we didn't have the most money, but like, yo, I was spoiled. Like, if I wanted... A sandwich, you go make me a sandwich. Cut off the crusts. Ooh, yes. okay. um, you know, I never, I never was told make it yourself, do it yourself. When it came to food, I would always get like my my porridge, my oats, but like with the butter in the middle. Oh man, I must tell I must tell you a story about Oliver because he did similar things where he used to like look through the window because we used to go for. Like uh, dinner or lunch, and he would be ready. He'd order his food, and then the knife and fork. He'd be waiting, and then he'd be waiting, and then he get he, they take him too slow. This is at the restaurant. And then he would get up and he would go and look through the window into the kitchen. <laughs> I so, walk into the kitchen actually. Yeah, and, like where's my food? And he'd check them out. He couldn't wait. He couldn't wait for his. But food. I was so fascinated by the cooking of it. Yeah. Over. So he was he was in the kitchen in the restaurants. I mean, wow. it was crazy. So then, then you moved to Cape Town and then um, it's so weird because my wife just wants to move to Durban. Oh. We want to go to Belito. Oh. Love it. I know I'm going to get a lot of messages because people who live in Belito cannot believe that, like how is not everyone living in Belito? Because people who have moved from especially Pretoria to Belito, yeah. they're just like, it's the best place. wow, this is incredible because belito is has become pretoria by the sea yeah i stand is with there, that statement a lot of afrikaans, pe- people there. Lot of afrikaans people and yeah. it's it's mostly estate living in belito yeah. same as in pretoria a lot of people live in like big housing estates yeah. a lot of estate living and if you go to like a shopping mall in belito it's just buckies and fortunes <laughs> swear and you hear afrikaans i mean durban for me was durban always like super yeah. english I can't, I can't speak afrikaans because it's my dad, my dad, name but Belito, Belito is flipping. <laughs> my dad's name is Vainon Yuri Swart. Okay, so your husband's Afrikaans. But he, yeah, he was born Afrikaans, but like he, because he went and. He was born Afrikaans and then? Well, what he, happened? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he got circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> he became English. He didn't convert. <laughs> he became English. No, he spent uh, most of his life overseas in schools because his father was a diplomat. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, okay. and, and his fa- mother was English. He ended up speaking more English than Afrikaans. And because he wasn't exposed then, to a lot yeah. of Afrikaans, 
he became more English than Afrikaans. And we grew up in Durban, so also that like no one was speaking Afrikaans, so then he ended no, up speaking English to before me. Before the Belize, it's pretty sad, eh? Because I mean, I I I I, I, like, <clears throat> I could I can understand Afrikaans now, but speak it, I'm so embarrassed. Now, but uh, yeah, so I, I know <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of messages from this, being like, "Why haven't you moved to Belito? You must move to Belito." But anyway, so you guys moved here, and then when did the Sorry, man, sir. That's load shedding again. It's weird how load shedding strikes in the middle of every episode. But, man, sir, if you listen to the last episode, you will know that there is a way to say goodbye to load shedding forever and always. And that is through our friends at Go Solar. And because you listened last week, you'll know there's no big upfront cost with Go Solar. They essentially pay for your entire solar system and you just pay them a monthly subscription cost. But I'm not going to talk to you today about how, from a cost perspective, it's a no brainer to go solar with Go Solar. But what I am going to tell you is that by using go solar you don't actually own the solar system and therefore don't have to worry about a thing because means that every little thing's gonna be all right where have i heard that means that you know like when you rent a house and you, you don't own it now now it's lacquer when the geezer breaks you just call the landlord hey my geezer's broken come and fix it you on or an act of god like a meteor hits your house hey there's a hole in my roof come fix it Call the roof people. Like that, Mensa. If anything happens to your solar system, something's not working, whatever, Go Solar will sort it out. It's the peace of mind that someone's got your back. That's Go Solar. Go S O L R without the A. Like. You're missing out on huge stories, yeah? I'm not missing out on huge uh, yeah. stories. <laughs> I was wanting to do chefing from very really young, oh, and yes, my dad yes. was saying. Yes. You can't, you're gonna, you must try to get into something else as well. Yes, that's what, hard. that's what he said. So the life of a chef is actually very similar to that of a performer because Absolutely. often like, our parents, also my mom, try to push me so much to listen, just get something creative, to fall back on, get something to fall back on. So he ended up going, he, he ended, when we came to Cape Town, he, we booked him in to go to Silver to soft cooking because mm. that's what mm. he really, really mm. wanted to do. Mm. So we decided... Silwood is great. It's Cornenbleu. It's internationally renowned. But because he had done only six months at, uh, he had six months left. In engineering. And he had no job. Yeah. So he ended up. Of course up, I didn't have a job. I was a student. Well, he had no I job. Bomb and I was well, he had nothing to do. So that is why we said, Where were you, you bombing? Would we know the place? <laughs> Would we know the place? Was it Yale or in Durban? It was in Durban. It was during the World Cup. It was uh, on uh, Farrah Road, Booty Bar. <laughs> Where? I can't even remember that. God. It's what booty bar? Booty bar. Yeah, it was like a, a, was it a strip club? No, it wasn't. It was like a, a, it was probably a play on Hooters, but it was like the. I can't the, even remember that. I know, it was more. So what were the girls in like short shorts short and shorts. tight t-shirts? No, it was like it was. A I bit think crazy. it was like the a, only the like only thing Hooters. that made it, it was like the World Cup. It was on Florida. I mean, it wasn't like a. It was like a pop up. Like a Hooters. <laughs> Like a Hooters, but for bums. <laughs> Hooters, but in Durban. So it's, ba uh, so it's basically, well, there is a Hooters in Umschlanga. And I go there every time I'm in Durban. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, why you want to move to Belita. No, and then people, <laughs> people, people you go, go to Hooters every time. <laughs> listen, Hooters, I will put this on record because people go, oh, gross. I'm like, guys, I'm not going to see the Hooters. girls in tight clothing yeah, okay. with modern technology if I want to watch anything <laughs> sexy or pornographic <laughs> I can do it in five seconds on my phone Hooters boneless wings they're the best is have you had it no <laughs> dude you are dude you a chef you don't know Hooters boneless no, wings I need to get involved no it's a sc it, oh, <laughs> terrible scandal okay so booties which is like Hooters but with hookah pipes yeah no. So you, <laughs> no, I actually, I can't no, remember hookups. working there at all. No, I said I hookah. Just say it was a, it was I said a, I said hookah pipes, like ugly bubbly. Oh, hookah. Because you know, every every place on Florida Road, you can oh, rent the right. ugly bubbly. <laughs> you're right. You drive up Florida Road, everyone's saying, "I'm sorry, the ugly bubbly." Doesn't matter what the place is. So no, so then he needed a job. So we said, "We'll go and get one." We we gave a CV through to. A friend of ours. I mean, what was on your CV then? Six Nothing. months. Nothing. Six Nothing. months civil engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Did not complete. No. So anyway, the friend said to a friend of hers, which was a family Anna, friend of ours. Yeah. That, you, um, Annalise, and then basically. Yeah. Do you want me to tell the story? No, can I actually tell the story? Because yes, you let your mom speak, Oli. So yeah, okay. So, but Annalise had no time to actually interview Oliver. 
So, um, and Oliver kept phoning and phoning. And then the next one day, he and that, said, this is now, sorry, your mother in law. You're now mo mother in law. Yes. Okay. So he phones Annalise, his mother in law, and says, Listen, I need to come for an interview now. And she said, What? This guy? She said, I'm very interested to see what he's like. So he comes here. <laughs> he comes here to this house for the interview. Next door. And the girls. The girls are sitting upstairs. So your mother-in-law lives next door as well? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So the girls are sitting upstairs in the double story looking down and Oliver walks in and comes for the interview to speak to Annalise. And then when Oliver leaves, Annalise says to the girls, so what do you think? Do you think I should employ him? And they said, yes. <laughs> and then I married, and this the, is that one and then I married the one. He married. Your, yeah. Okay. Hello. We became best friends. So, and then uh, it was in the beginning, it was too like, it was like brother and sisterly kind yeah. of like friend zone. Because mm. yes. I mean, I was working for her mom and then we just got drunk like one night and hooked up. I said, don't get involved. <laughs> I told him, don't get involved. Yeah. yeah. And if you have a fallout with your boss, then, yeah, then it could be the other way Her around. mom. Yeah. Like where do yeah. you, <laughs> so how do you na navigate that relationship now? And are you guys now sort We're of- We're so close. Yeah. Like, um, Annalise and my wife, Julia. Uh, we we are super close. Mm. It's uh, they travel together. We were as well. like family before we started. We got married. If you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. I was, I was already like because Oliver was actually working. Travel. Ended up working. I mean, you've been working. He's been working there for thirteen years since yeah. he left school. So well, I'm working with at least thirteen years now. So you you've never you've never done the the whole restaurant. I worked in the restaurant. Yes, I did. I, I did Silwood. Then uh, part of Silver, you work at the restaurant. So I did so like did Test Kitchen, Potluck yeah. Club. But I, at, as soon as oh, I did wow. those stints, I knew like I'm never going to be in a restaurant. Restaurant. What, what about that put you off? And what do you like about the catering more than a restaurant? So the restaurant is the same place every day. Every day. And yeah. it's a, the menus are probably only change every two, three months. So you're doing the same thing. Mm. I mean, maybe if you're like up in the ranks, then you can change it up or do what you want. But yeah. I couldn't see myself climbing that ladder. And with the catering, it's so different. I mean, we, I'll sit down, say you're a couple and uh, you're getting married. I will find out exactly if, uh, like about your, what you guys like, what you dislike, where you've traveled wow, to, did okay. you eat something together? And then we try and incorporate in the menu. So it's all curated yes. and every event is- Very creative, obviously. Yeah, different place, different menu, Yo. different scenes. Yeah. Good vibes. What's the biggest wedding you've done or who's the biggest wedding you've done? <clears throat> Anyone Some of the big we weddings, know. we did uh, Tim Tebow, that famous NFL player. Yeah, with, with, with Demi Lee. Uh, the Demi Lee, the Miss, Miss Universe. I think she was Miss Universe okay. from South Africa. Okay. Um, we did... Prince Charles's lunch. We did yeah, Prince Charles's lunch. We, done we did Desmond Tutu's birthday. Desmond Tutu's birthday. That's we did nice. Spencer, Amelia Spencer and Greg Mallet's It's good wedding. that you didn't do Prince Edward's lunch. <laughs> Prince Edward's lunch. <laughs> What, who's the... Who's Prince oh, Edward? Yeah, no. No, Prince Harry. I've messed up the... Prince Harry. No, man, who's the no, dodgy the, guy? The dodgy one. Oh. Prince... <laughs> Prince... Look it up. Guys. Oh. Andrew. Prince Andrew. That was the joke I was going for. Oh, for. Messed I'm up glad my I'm joke. here to remind you. No, okay. Let's... We'll, with the magic of editing, we'll go back. <laughs> Good thing you didn't do Prince Andrew's lunch. <laughs> Joke's not done. Knee slapper. Because you would have had. Because <laughs> you would have had to have a kiddies play area. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Oh my gosh. But I mean, it's been I mean, fun. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> but I'm an arsehole. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay. What, what do you think of uh, wine in a can? By the way, as a chef yourself. Yeah, that was the first question <clears> you asked <throat> me. I didn't answer it. <laughs> I think it's cool. I, 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 my cooking style is very much about being non, what's the word? Pretentious. Pretentious. And this is non-pretentious, you yeah. know? It gives you, it's easy. You call your cans in, go for a walk. Yeah, it's quite nice up. for a picnic. No yeah. washing up later. Yeah, no washing up later. I, I think, think it's, it's great for a picnic, you know? When mm. you want to just throw, you don't need a wine opener, just take your can and yeah. off you go. Because I've been stuck in places where I've got a, bottle of wine with a cork in yeah. and I'm staying in a hotel and obviously the room doesn't have one and then yeah. go down to the bar and it's either closed or they say or they don't want to give it to you or they say yeah they say they have said that oh no you have to we can't or you have to buy a cork it's, <laughs> it's, 
closed or whatever, and then I'm there in my room with the bottle, hacking with away like a crazy. <laughs> have you person, done the, the shoe one? Hacking away at a the shoe w- with a cork. Have you done? You put the you put the bottle in the shoe, and then you smash the bottle against the wall, and then it like the bottom of the bottle into the shoe, and oh, you just douche either. douche, and it comes out. It's unbelievable. He's yeah, always been stuck without a wine opener. Yeah. Then I'd have to go knock on the door next door, <laughs> make so sure there's no one. A bit of drilling. <laughs> Listen, you're gonna you're gonna hear some banging in a while, <laughs> in a bit. Just bear with me. Just, just need to get my bottle open. That's oh, that's funny. a laugh. It's only the wine, I swear. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that my mom has given us as children to mm. like succeed in life. Yeah. That's been amazing. I'm just going to get a bit deep here. Yeah? Humor. But uh, my mom, um, is, her personality is very much like, like with regards to like homework. Say, say I come with homework yeah. and I come to her and I say, Mom, I need help with my homework. And then she would say, I'm not helping you. <laughs> and then I would say, okay. She says, but and even if I wasn't start doing my homework, she wouldn't care. She actually wouldn't care. <laughs> and then I actually went and I said, listen, I'm not doing homework and you're not telling me I'm not doing. She goes, I don't care. If you fail, that's your problem. And that was her vibe. <laughs> Always. You are on your own. You know, you, you, if you fail, <laughs> you fail. Yo, I would have and failed school, eh? If my <laughs> mom didn't do my, I would have failed school if my mom didn't do my, my projects for me. Yo, thank no. you, mom. Thank you, mom. I'm, <laughs> I know you say you're grateful, but I am equally as eternally grateful for you doing all my projects for me. I always ask the moms, I mean, it's, it's I guess, harder with a chef because like with musicians, I'd, for example, ask, you know, are they, what, what's your favorite song? And what's like, your what, favorite dish? What is a you? song that, that you dislike? But I mean, is there even anything you dislike about Oliver. Ollie's job? No, Oliver has the best job because mm. we do get the benefits, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. Um, not often. Does he not taste often. it? Does he taste dishes on no, you? Of course. See, he doesn't. He doesn't cook that often because he's so busy. Mm. But when he does, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, he did a a Asian lamb, which blew my mind. You always talk about. This I know one. that was the best. An Asian lamb. Can we An get Asian into trouble lamb. for saying that? That is <laughs> cultural. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> And you did like what a, Asia? a fragrant, what? he did a fragrant rice with this Asian lamb in a poiki. Yeah. I said that right, eh? A poiki. Yeah, poiki. And then in the fire, and then the a lamb. A swart poiki. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> swart poiki. And then it just, the lamb just fell off the bone into this beautiful Asian broth, which is at the bottom. And then he served that with a, a savory rice. coconut rice. And then he put these like, crumbly nuts or something on top. Yeah, toasted, oh, it was toasted nuts and fried shallots and, and that, that is the benefit of having a chef as a son mm. and um we're so lucky <laughs> is there is there a dish that you feel needs some work with him well you know the, the or that you feel <laughs> you can cook better well, yes. i mean every mom has their can, specialty dish what is your my mom's specialty dish pampoon cookies you know pampoon cookies like pumpkin fritters yes. I've never tasted a better pampoon cookie than, than my mom's. I think I'm a better soup maker than him. I make incredible soups. Like wow. a, I've got a soup here in my fridge when I made last night that you, you must think taste. I, can taste I think it's it? your okay. cry. But you know, there's, there's this, this competition. That's quite a, a niche, actually, eh? There's actually soup. A soup. It is, you know what? People don't understand that soup is an act of love. Mm. Yeah, a soup, a soup needs a to have love it's, in it. Eh? First of all, we start. I don't, obviously, I don't use preservative stocks. I have to make the stock from scratch. So Yo, you don't use an OXO? No. <laughs> OXO, <laughs> OXO, one OXO. Isn't that the cubes? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't you see, use I know. OXO. You know. <laughs> no, I've got to make it from the stock right through to the very end. So it takes two days to make soup. Saying like, imagine you're like, mom, when's dinner ready? In yeah, two days. No. <laughs> Get some KFC <laughs> until then. My wife no. also loves soup and I think like, I can't, I, I can't, I, but it can't be the actual meal. So you guys didn't grow up with KFC, Steers, no. nothing, That's all those idea. childhood... I had Debonair's Club Sub. That's well, obviously I really they would get some that. treats. I just want to go back to that, that dish because there's a competition between his father and him with the curry. Okay. The Durban curry. Yes. It's like a family thing. A family thing. So Oliver always said he can't make this curry and actually recently... 
I just like he, like he He's accepted, ma- you know. He, he accepted like, and said, "You can make it now. Your curry is as good as mine, boy." Yeah, I was like crying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad. <laughs> like Rafiki because this, giving you the bless, giving Simba the blessing. <laughs> exactly. He gave me the, the so he does the he calls the you put in the you flavor the oil first in the curry, a Durban curry. You put your whole spices, and he calls it the sticks and stones. And I said to him, I finally learned. The sticks and stones. Thanks, Dad. Do you do you have a guilty pleasure that you that you like? It's it's bad. It's preservative, but you. Well, oros was an issue mm. Mm, because we loved oros, and I never had coke though. In the I have asthma now because of that. You used to take oros like a shot, just, just <laughs> without without water. Maybe without me knowing. <laughs> Did you do that? Gosh, that's quite hectic. No. It's very sweet. Either <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, before school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think our guilty, our guilty pleasure was Oros. Yeah, Oros. Yeah. So. And now, Oli, I don't what I drink is Oros your... anymore. I mean, it's not in the house, but. Yeah. But my, my guilty pleasure would probably be an Oreo McFlurry. Yo. Really, like, yeah. How good is it? That's a culinary know. invention. Yeah. It's like the texture of it is insane. I mean, it's crazy. McDonald's. I, I think they put drugs in there. Yeah. Because how do we keep going back? It's a little bit of salt. I don't know what's in there. It's mal. Yeah. <laughs> a sprinkle of salt Hello. just to bring it out of sweetness. Oh yeah. What is, what is your favorite dish to, to make? If you if I had to impress someone, I would make them the curry. Because the curry has okay. been like honed in and it's been like the Durban He's curry. He's obsessed with fried rice at the moment. Um, yeah. I go. That, that's, that's actually a thing. With the, with the food, I'm like, uh, in, other chefs like, I don't know, they'll cook lots of things. and But I get, like, obsessive about things. Mm. I'll, like, like I we, we went to bow down and then I had egg fried rice. And then I was like, I need to get insane at egg fried rice. And I literally made it for two weeks straight. Do you make it with peas in? No. Do you do the peas in? No, no, oh. no. The, the, I, you can do it. That's, like, the, the, that's a, I mean, you can do it. But the, the main thing is that it's got garlic, ginger, spring onion, MSG, sugar, salt. I know this is crazy, <laughs> but there has to have But why, why does MSG... It has to be. Where do you get it? Where do you buy MSG? From the Asian stores. Asian stores. (laughs) 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 No. Um, And then um, you have to use day-old rice. Uh, I I prefer jasmine rice. And it's insane. And the egg, obviously. Mm. Fried egg. I think that he gets it from his father because the one time in Durban, my husband made creme brulees for a week. And I put on five kilos. Eating creme brulees every day. Was he trying to perfect creme brulee? Yeah, creme brulee. You had a restaurant. Yeah, different you had re- recipes. He wanted to try like all the different recipes to see which creme brulee was the best I creme brulee. I didn't know that. Yeah. So didn't you can you see it, it's like. Didn't you have a restaurant when you were young? With, with yeah, we brulee? did in the beginning. We, when I was actually still studying, my husband started. It was like takeaway where we had restaurant. Gourmet takeaway. Gourmet takeaway sort of thing. Mm. But the food took a long time to get to the front. It was a, it was a nightmare. No panicking. It was I, fast food without the fog. Yes. It was just food. <laughs> it was never going to work. It's never going to work. <laughs> I was going to ask. Okay, this is my last question. You are, I know it's a bit dark, but you're getting the, you've been convicted. Okay, all of us, we've been convicted. We're getting the death sentence. Yes. Getting the noose. What's your What's your final one? meal? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna yeah. start us off. This is cool. I like also I was last I was seeing Because your final meal and you have to choose one. You yes. have, have to choose one. The warden's there, he's like you're getting hanged tomorrow. You have to we bringing it, you know, to you tomorrow late afternoon. So you can't be oh, I don't know, it depends what season I'm in, like it's tomorrow. Okay. Mine I would say it's also fast food, but we don't have it in South Africa. I'm, a, I'm hoping my prison is Close. in the UK. <laughs> Fa- have you had Five Guys? Yes. Five Guys. Oh, good. Five I, make the, I make smash burgers. I'm obsessed with that. Yeah. So Five Guys, if you don't know Five Guys, it's you, they, they do, they're actually doing what I think McDonald's, if you Used watch that do. movie, that, what the oh, plan was. Did, yeah. It was like just burgers and fries. Now McDonald's is steaming those buttons. Just now they fucking doing fish burgers and <laughs> five but guys. Great. Beef you can the, the choice is beef burger, cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger. And then there's like a little menu and you choose your garnish. What do you get? Mine is the bacon cheeseburger. I don't do pickles everything and I just do barbecue sauce and mayo. 
And then they've got a fries where you can add a Cajun spice. And I would get a Dr. Pepper with that. Oof. My, that's my last meal. My favorite is a lamb and lentil curry with a roti. Mom, what happened to your steak? No. You're obsessed with steak. It's the first no. thing you have when you come back. I know. I love steak. But that's the problem. I love so much food. I'm a foodie. Yeah, but you're getting, the, you're getting the news. You're, you're getting, getting the, the news. news. You one, have choose to one. choose one. Yo. Okay. It's your last meal. Okay, then I'm going to have a, a one of those T-bone Charmel's tea steaks that you gave me. What's the side? It's a T-bone. A T-bone, yeah. And it's done with a pepper sauce. Yeah. And it's done with potato wedges mm. and maybe a rocket salad fresh on salad, the fresh side. Fresh salad, Lemon dressing. And a big, big glass of Chardonnay. I also was going to throw a good glass of wine in. I love a cold glass of wine. Oh. Okay, so got it? Yours. Potato wedges, Sorry, rocket I might go salad, back on the potato wedges. Chardonnay. <laughs> maybe I want a Free big, cream, spinach baked, and butternut. big baked potato with sour cream. Okay. Yes. Nice. And okay. butter. Sour cream and butter. And butter. And bun- yeah, both. I no. think I, I, mine would probably just be a bur- like also like a burger like you. I, it would be a smash burger. Um, that or a pasta. But if I had to choose between the you two. You have to choose one. You're getting the choose. news. Yeah. How many See, times I, was I say? You're I getting the said news. I love pasta as well. Oh, it's hard. I love pasta too. I would probably do a something like from my childhood. Like probably like a. It's, there was a restaurant called Spigadora in Durban. I don't know if you know it. Yes, I do. They used to make an off-the-menu dish for me, which was... Uh, well, I mean, pe- you were in the fucking kitchen the whole time. Yes. Yeah. Death like. staring them. Eventually, <laughs> they were like, let's just make something special for this guy so he stops walking into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so that was called Penne Picante, Marco. You, if you're listening to this, thank you. Um, it was, uh, it was yeah, a bolognese good. with green chili, dash of cream, and penne with oh, parmesan. That oh. is... That's yours. Yo. Okay, final answer to drink. And to drink, I would probably have an ice cold, hmm, not ice cold, but a cool, like light white wine, like a Pinot or Grenache. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to follow Chef Ollie, we'll put his handle on. Follow him on social media. Follow the brand. Get me and B. B and B. Me and B. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We have to go now because yeah. um, Bettina ordered us some. Um, uh, lack of Mackie D's on Uber Eats and it uh, looks like the driver is <laughs> arriving so we need to go thank you very much thanks for having me donkey yalla donkey bye bye cheers and donkey house yo finish my can empty mom I finished mine I was drinking some of yours <laughs> sure, sure I've said that for my last meal and a lovely can of house wine of course <laughs> with my five guys <laughs> thanks guys your Mom with Skulk is a Telltale Media production and hosted by me, Skulk Besaitner. Once again, please hit the subscribe button on your podcast app. That's it for today, but I'll catch you next week for another chat with another Tani.